Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with crispy beer batter fish and chips. That's right, anybody can do a beer batter fish that stays crispy for a few minutes. But I'm sorry, for me that is just not long enough. Okay, not to sound too high maintenance, but I kind of want my crispy fried fish to stay crispy throughout the entire eating process. And by the way, it's always a nice thing when the recipe that provides the best results also just happens to be the easiest recipe, which is the case here. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with our batter. And that's going to begin with one cup of self-rising flour, which is nothing more than regular flour that's milled with baking powder and salt. And as usual, I will tell you how to mix up your own in the blog post, which is super easy and only takes a second. And then to this flour, we're also going to add about two tablespoons of rice flour. Or if you want, some other kind of non-wheat flour. Okay, some people like cornstarch, some people like potato starch, which will also work, but I like the rice flour. And then last but not least, I'm also going to add in a little extra touch of baking powder. And even though our self-rising flour already contains baking powder, I do like to add just a little bit more. And that's it. We'll take a whisk and give this a mix until we have everything thoroughly combined. And that is now ready to finish off by stirring in our beer. Which, by the way, I'm going to wait to do until I'm ready to use this. And because one of the secrets here is keeping the batter as cold as possible, what we'll do is transfer these dry ingredients into the freezer. And we'll leave this in there until we're ready to mix in our beer. And then once that's set, we can move on to prep our fish. And today I'll be using some beautiful frozen cod, which I gently defrosted overnight in the fridge. And if we are going to use frozen fish, or any fish for that matter, we want to make sure to get it as dry as possible. Okay, so use some paper towels and blot off any excess moisture. And then what we'll do once our fish has been thawed and dried is possibly cut it down the middle to make two approximately one inch thick strips. And sure, we could have just fried this as is, but by cutting it, not only will it cook faster, but we're also increasing our surface area, which means that much more crispy coating. And then what we'll do once that's cut is go ahead and dust those in a little bit of seasoned rice flour before they go in the batter. And what this is going to do is absorb any of that last moisture on the surface. And then once that's been lightly dusted and we shake off the excess, what we'll do is transfer it onto some crinkled up foil. And this is just going to serve as sort of a drying rack for that fish. Okay, so that's going to let some air circulate underneath. And we will have less chance of a soggy bottom. Oh, by the way, I'm just seasoning with a little bit of salt. But if you did want to sneak in some spices, like curry powder, chili powder, etc., this would be a great step to do that. But anyway, we'll go ahead and dust our fish in the rice flour, along with, like I said, any other seasonings we want. And then because we want to keep everything cold, we'll transfer that into the fridge until we're ready to use it. And that's it. Once our fish is prepped and our oil's hot, we can pull our dry ingredients out of the freezer and finish this batter off by pouring in some beer. And for this, I recommend a nice inexpensive lager style. Okay, I have one imported from Australia in large blue cans. But really, any cheap lager is going to work. And that's because your more affordable canned beers are going to be nice and light in color and taste, not to mention have a nice high level of carbonation. And all we're going to do is whisk in enough until it's as thick or as thin as we want. Okay, so I'll start with a nice big splash, and I'll give it a stir. And then I'll decide if I need more, which I did. And what I'm going for is something similar to a nice thick pancake batter. All right, keep in mind, the thicker the batter, the thicker the coating once it's fried. And since personally I want a nice thin crispy coating, I tend to go for a thinner batter. And I'm actually going to grab a spoon so you can get a good look at what I'm talking about. Okay, so make it thicker if you want. But I generally shoot for something that's just going to coat the fish. And by the way, I mentioned keeping everything cold is a key. So if you're not going to use this right away, pop it in the fridge or keep it on a bowl of ice. But I was starving and ready to fry. So I'm going to transfer in two pieces of my nice cold dry fish into the batter. And then once those are nicely coated, we'll go ahead and lift them out letting most but not all of the batter drip off, at which point we will carefully transfer that into some 375 degree oil. And by the way, I did that first piece wrong, because we don't want the oil splashing towards us. So place it in like this, so it splashes away from you. And then what we'll do after making sure those aren't sticking together, is let them fry for about three to four minutes, or until they're crispy and beautifully golden brown. And there are some things we deep fry, that about halfway through we can kind of tip them and flip them over, but fried fish isn't really one of them. So don't worry about trying to turn them over. They can just cook with that same side down. Although sometimes to hedge my bets, I will give them a little dunking for a few seconds. But anyway, like I said, we'll let those go for about three or four minutes, or until they look a little something like this. 
at which point we'll fish those out and let those drain for a few seconds on some paper towel. And as you can hopefully see, this recipe really does produce a gorgeous piece of fried fish, which we will want to serve immediately, on top of either some french fries, which people in certain places call chips, or on real actual chips. And as you can see, I've lined the bowl with some newspaper, and a little bit of an homage to actual fish and chips. Speaking of which, because malt vinegar is often served with the fried fish, I actually went with salt and vinegar potato chips. And that's it, before I tuck in, I went ahead and tucked in a little bit of tartar sauce and a wedge of lemon, which is not traditional with regular fish and chips, but is very, very, very traditional with Western New York fish fries, which is what I like to pretend this is. And by the time I did that, it had been about 10 minutes since this came out of the fryer, but it was still crispy, as you'll hear when I bite. Oh yeah. And what I find amazing with this recipe is that we've achieved this level of crispiness with such an incredibly thin coating. I mean, it's barely there. In fact, this might even qualify as a low carb recipe. Oh, and by the way, as I was taking this next bite, I thought to myself, I'm gonna stop and take some pictures of the cross section, which is why you're about to see me pinch off a jagged piece of the coating, which as I was doing, I realized would look weird on camera. So just something I wanted to mention, because that would have kept a few people up wondering, why did he pinch that fish stick? And of course, it's probably really obvious, but I'll tell you anyway. Just because I use cod for this doesn't mean you have to. I mean, you are after all the Arthur Treachers, of what sea creatures this features. And virtually any fish or seafood will work with this technique. But anyway, I went ahead and finished that first piece. And I went ahead and grabbed the second. And even though it had been quite a while since this came out of the fryer, it was still just as crispy as my first bite. So I just absolutely love this formula. Oh, and let me give you a little tip here. Whether you're gonna use a tartar sauce or some other sauce, you wanna go ahead and apply that to each bite. All right, don't just slop it all on there at once. Otherwise, everything's gonna get soggy. All right, so the method we wanna use is the bite sauce, bite sauce, bite sauce. Whoops, sorry, it's actually the other way around. It's sauce bite, sauce bite, sauce bite. And that will help preserve the crispiness. But anyway, that's it. My favorite method for doing beer battered fish. Whether you're gonna serve yours on regular chips, or the British style potato chips, which are actually French fries, which are really actually Belgian fries. But the point is no matter what you serve this on, I really do hope you give it a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.